Welcome everyone to Begin With Breath Tai Chi. My name is Dr. Adam Potts, the Tai Chi PT, and today is Tai Chi for rotator cuff injuries. So the rotator cuff is part of your shoulder, and so this is great if you have shoulder pain, stiffness, or if you just wanna prevent shoulder injuries to begin with. All right, and so if you can hear me, then type in Team Live. If you're here live, if you're on the replay, type in Team Replay. All right, that way I can see your name pop up. We can all connect. All right, and then also if you're getting benefit from this class, please click the like button. That'll send this out to more people in the group. All right, spread the love. All right, I'm really excited. So tomorrow, we're actually having the first day of our in-person workshop in Asheville. We have a three-day workshop starting tomorrow. It's gonna be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday all day. Lots of breaks, of course. So for everyone that's coming, I'm so excited to meet you in person. It's been years in the waiting, so I'm, I'm really excited to connect in person finally. So, uh, and if you didn't make this one, then don't worry, we'll have probably at least one per year where you can come down to Asheville and now is like the best time of year. The trees are in peak uh, foliage, so it's beautiful colors. Temperature's not too bad and lots of stuff to do. We have the mountains, we have really cool downtown, lots of, you know, really original things here. So, all right, so, now, if you do live in Asheville or in the area, there's still space. So if you do want to come down to the workshop, just let me know. Just type in in-person workshop in the comments, and I'll give you some information if you still wanted to come down. So, all right. So after the flow, we'll do about a 15-minute flow today. And it's really geared towards people that have shoulder issues, whether it's a rotator cuff injury or just tightness in general, stiffness, pain, or just doesn't really feel at ease. And so this flow is going to be really take that into consideration and make it nice and easy so that you can still move, you can still do Tai Chi, and also start the healing process. All right, or continue it or really amplify it. All right, so Tai Chi is something you don't want to stop if you get injured. You can always do it seated if you injure your legs or anything like that or your back. Or you can do it standing, but just if the, say it's your shoulders, what we'll do today is we'll pretty much keep the arms lower than shoulder height. So when in doubt, just keep the arms lower than shoulder height, and that'll be a great way that you can continue to move, continue to heal without likely aggravating it as much, or hopefully not at all. All right, but if anything bothers you today, you can skip it, so listen to your body, all right, or just do very small motions. That's another way you can modify, but once again, if you do Tai Chi like we do in our classes here every week, it'll actually help with your healing. All right, but once again, as always, check with your healthcare, primary healthcare provider first, you know, just to be safe, um, especially if you have something pretty severe going on. Um, and some people do need surgery. Some people can actually prevent it. And I'm going to tell you more about all of that, plus the basics of the rotator cuff after the flow. So stick around to the end if you can. But for now, find a place where you can do some mindful movement. All right, if you're new here, you don't need a lot of space, just enough room where you can reach your arms out to the side and enough to where you can take a step forward and take a step back. All right, so as always with this flow, you don't have to get anything perfect. Just follow along. I'll be your mirror image. All right, you can have a seat at any time. All right, I also cue the breathing so you can breathe with the movements. So really synchronizing the mind, the body, and the breath. But if you're brand new, just get familiar with the movements at first. You'll have to watch pretty closely, but then over time, you'll just know what to do. Your body, you'll learn the movements in your body. And then if you ever do want to learn the traditional forms, they'll be so much easier to learn, much more enjoyable, and you'll probably stick with it till the end. All right, so we'll begin today with the feet shoulder width apart. So get as tall as you can, rising up through the crown of your head, and then let go 5% so that you're alert but relaxed. Soften the knees, soften the hips slightly so that you're not rigid. And then from here, we'll begin to turn from the hips and the waist, letting the hands knock against the lower abdomen and the lower back. We call this one knocking on the door of life. So the door of life is an acupressure point in the lower back. When we knock on it, it stimulates the energy. But this one also helps to release tension from the shoulders. 
All right, so you can imagine that your arms are empty coat sleeves, just dangling. All right, let, them, let your body turn, guide the movement. So your torso is driving the movement, your arms are following behind. All right, this helps to really release tension from the neck, the upper back, and the shoulders. All right, and then slowing it down, coming back to center. Just take a moment to feel into the body. And then from here, we'll sink the chi, both hands together. So as you breathe in, the arms float up, they gather in front, as if you're bringing in energy to the heart, and then send it down towards the earth. Breathing in, gather, breathing out, directing down. Sinking the chi, nice and easy, nice and slow. One more time, sink the chi. And then from here, the arms circle in front, making two loose fists. The forearms come towards each other around the back. Then reverse direction, open up the shoulders and chest. Breathing out, round. Breathing in, open. Spinal cord breathing. So this is kind of like a good morning stretch. Just really opening up the shoulders and chest. Just bring your arms up as much as it feels comfortable so you can keep them low. Just kind of open them sideways if that feels better. Once again, listening to your body, one more time, spinal cord breathing. And then from here, the arms float down by the sides. The palms face towards the body right in front. And then very gently begin to turn towards one side, the palms open. Then coming back to center, the palms face towards the body and then other side. The wise owl looks behind, turning the head too if it feels okay. Nice and easy, nice and slow, gentle rotation. All right, one more time, the wise owl looks behind. And then from here, the hands float up in front, draw the hands in towards the heart, step the foot in, and then step out to the corner as you push forwards in space. Breathing in as you draw in, Breathing out as you push. Nice and easy, nice and slow, feeling all the sensations that you can, bringing mindfulness to the body. One more time, the push. This time the palms face towards each other. The hands go out to the corner, the palms face away from each other. They open, circling out and around, scooping under, back out to the corner, parting the clouds. Breathing in, open, Breathing out and keep your arms even lower if that feels better for you. All right, so really just listening to your body, never forcing it, just always easing in. One more time, parting the clouds. And then step the front foot back in, the hands come back in towards the heart, shift the weight, step in. And then step out to the other corner, push the mountain. Drawing in, pushing out. Nice and easy, nice and slow, no rush, nowhere to go. Can you be here now? All right, one more time, the push. This time the palms face towards each other, the hands go out to the corner. The palms face away from each other, they open, circling out and around, scooping under, back out to the corner. Breathing in, open, Breathing out or taking as many breaths as you need. Feeling the sensations, feeling the flow. One more time, parting the clouds. Very nice. Then step the front foot back in, hug the tree and soften. From here, the arms open up wide. Then this hand here drops down and drifts over to the other side. The hands switch positions. Then they float across like clouds in the sky. When you get to the corner, the hands switch again. Wave hands like clouds. Drifting across, nice and easy, nice and slow. Letting go of any tension, any stress. Softening the shoulders, softening the neck. Like a moving meditation. Moving with effortless ease. All right, one more time. 
parting the clouds. Then this time both hands brush out to the side, they float down and then brush out to the corner. Coming all the way around, back in towards the hip and then out to the other corner as we polish the table. Gentle rotation, you can lean into it if you want to. Almost like your hands are just brushing on the surface of a nice smooth table, making it shine. All right, one more time. And then this time the hands float up to about shoulder height or maybe lower if that feels better for you. Coming over to the other side. And then from here, the palms face away. They drift right across the horizon and then back down. Floating up, drift across, painting on the canvas. Almost like we're making nice, gentle brush strokes. One more time. And then reverse direction with the arms, coming up to shoulder height, or somewhere around there. <laughs> then palms face away, drift across, and then down. Breathing in, <sighs> breathing out. Once again, take as many breaths as you need. Painting on the canvas, very nice. And then circle in front, hug the tree and soften. From here, the arms open up wide. The hands float down by the sides as you step one foot in, coming on the ball of the foot. The arms float out to the sides like a beautiful bird we call the crane. You can keep your foot down or you can lift it up, touching down as needed. This time the arms can float up and over just as much as you can. And then down. Other side, just the arms at first, the crane. Breathing in, breathing out. This time lifting your leg if you like. Meeting yourself where you're at. And then reaching up if it feels okay. Or keeping him at shoulder height's fine. This time, reverse direction with the arms, circle in front, hug the tree. And then from here, the hands face towards each other, right in front of the heart. And as you breathe in, the hands open slightly. And they come back towards each other as you breathe out. This time, open a little bit more, coming back towards each other. This time, big opening, accordion breathing. Another round, breathing in, opening small, Breathing out, this time a little bit bigger. And then finally, big opening. One more round, accordion breathing. Breathing in, breathing out. Opening a little bit more. And then big opening. And then from here, the hands float down right in front. They drift up to shoulder height. Once again, nice gentle sway side to side, like tall grass in the breeze. And then from here, this hand scoops down, comes right out in front to about eye level, the other hand by the hip, and then down. Same side, just the arms at first. <clears throat> This time, if you want, you can lift your leg, touching down as needed. The elbow right over the thigh. The rooster stands on one leg. Keeping your foot down, or you can lift it up. It's okay to wobble. Just letting go of judgment the best you can. Bringing curiosity to your experience. Once more on this side, the rooster stands on one leg. This time the arms drift over to the other side. They float up to shoulder height. And then this hand scoops down and comes right out in front to eye level. And then down. Same side, just the arms again. Taking your time. How mindful can you be? This time you can lift your leg if you like, touching down as needed. That still counts. Stepping down, <clears throat> touching down or lifting up, 
breathing. One more time, the rooster stands on one leg. And then from here, circle the arms all the way around and hug the tree. Bring it back to center, the arms open wide. The hands float down, the backs of the hands face each other. They float up the midline and then drift out to the side, the fountain. Breathing in, rising up, breathing out, softening down. <sighs> Moving like water, soft but powerful. Breathing in, breathing out. One more time, the fountain. And then this time, the fingertips point up. And then very gently rotate to one side. One hand spirals forward, the other behind. And coming back to center, fingertips point up, coming up the center, rotate the other way, making the tiger claws. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more time, the tiger claw. Very nice. And then from here, reverse direction with the arms, floating up to the sides, and then floating down, the palms face up, and then begin to breathe in as the hands float forward, coming all the way up and over, and then down in front of the body. Breathing in, gathering in the energy, gathering in the breath, letting it wash through the body, the bathing breath. It's like we're bathing in this healing energy just coming up just as much as you can, bring the energy in down through the body. One more time, the bathing breath. And then this time, the arms circle all the way in front. The hands come together, prayer position, right in front of the heart. As you breathe in, the hands open to the sides. As you breathe out, the hands come back towards each other. Clearing out old stuck energy. It's no longer serving you. Coming back in. Breathe in as you open. Breathing out, coming back together. One more time, the heart opening breath. And then from here, the hands float down. Drifting out to the sides. The hands float down, palms face up, one hand on top of the other. And then this hand here floats up and over and then down the center line of the body. Other side, breathe in as the hand floats up, breathing out, centering. Creating mental focus and clarity, calming the heart, calming the mind. One more time, centering. This time, both arms float up and over just as much as you can. The hands float down to the waist as you soften the hips and knees circling the hands in front as if you had a big ball in front of the body scooping under back up to the heart and then down one more time open the heart rising up softening down this time making a diamond shape with the hands in front of the heart press out sending out all your loving kindness to the world may all beings be free from suffering May they be happy, may they be healthy, may they live with ease. And turning your palms to face yourself, hands come to the heart. May I be kind to myself, may I feel connected with all beings. May I love myself just as I am. hands can float down to the lower abdomen or anywhere that feels effortless. And then step the feet together or as close as you can. You can close your eyes or just keep a soft gaze and let your body rock and sway ever so slightly. Bamboo in the wind. Just feeling the gentle rocking motion in the body. Feel the sensations of the breath. And then bring your attention into your heart, creating an inner smile, expressing gratitude to yourself for being here today.
And if your eyes were closed, you can slowly open them. The hands can come together in front of the heart. And we can finish with a bow. All right, thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed today's flow. Let me know how you're feeling. So tune into your body and type in the chat how are you feeling right now or in the comments. All right, and then stick around because I'm gonna go over some of the basics of the rotator cuff and what you can do today to start the healing process even more. All right. All right, feeling good. Thanks, Margaret. All right, feeling better. Awesome. Need to do this every day. Yes, we'll have it posted all week. If you're a studio member, you'll have it unlimited access. So this will be right in your video library. Let's see. Awesome. Oh, hey, Susan. Feeling calm. Awesome. All right, and so what I wanted to do now is go over some of the basics of the rotator cuff, because what is that? All right, I got a good picture for you. That might help. So I'm going to share my screen here. All right, hopefully this works good. All right, there we go. All right, so this is a picture of the rotator cuff. All right, so this is the front view, or anterior view. So that means front. So looking at you from the front, you'd see there's these muscles on the front of the shoulder blade right there. So this is your arm. And that's like the top of your shoulder blade kind of comes over the top a little bit. And so uh, this is part of your shoulder blade too. So the muscles kind of weave kind of around that shoulder blade on the front, on the top. So this one's called the supraspinatus. So that's the top. That's the one that gets injured the most. So keep an eye on that one. This is your subscapularis. So that one can get injured too, but it's not quite as common. But mostly it's this top one, the supraspinatus. All right, this is the back view, so you can see it's right goes right over the top into the shoulder, into the humerus, which is your upper arm. All right, so it goes shoulder blade to upper arm humerus bone. Now you can see there's this shelf right here, right? And so this shelf can kind of be tipped forward for some people, and that kind of pinches on this tendon. So the tendon is like the place where the muscle attaches to the bone. And so the tendon is actually what gets torn the most with the rotator cuff tear or sprain, if it gets overstretched um, or irritated. But basically, yeah, the, that's what we think happens with what's called impingement. Um, and it's when the shoulder's not in the greatest of alignments, mostly because the muscles are weak. Because we don't tend to work out these little muscles here, on the top, bottom, and then the back one, this one's called the infraspinatus. That one's probably the second most common one to get injured. Um, and then there's the teres minor. And so that's the small one here. So you don't hear too much about that one, but that one can get really weak. And when you have an imbalance of the muscles, then the alignment goes off and that's where you start to get injuries because things aren't aligned right because the muscles, but it all starts with being strong. So the stronger we get, the better we feel pretty much no matter what condition you have, right? You usually just get better with the stronger when you get stronger. So what I'm going to show you today is first one exercise that if you do have pain, that this usually helps with most people. It'll help relieve the pain and prevent frozen shoulder. So that's another condition where you lose mobility. You can't lift your arm because the joint's so stiff. So that's not really due to the muscles necessarily. It's more to the joint itself is the, is the, the thing that's limiting motion. All right. The rotator cuff injuries is the muscles kind of limiting and they all kind of tie in together though. So that's why I do both. All right, so first I'll show you how to keep your shoulder mobile. And then I'll show you how to start strengthening it so that you can start the healing if you have an issue with it or if you want to prevent it. These are going to be things you should do every day, pretty much no matter who you are. Um, it's going to be very helpful. All right. So hopefully that little visual helps. So uh, that's the back side of the view. That's the front view. But yeah, basically it's just the muscles of the rotator cuff. There's four muscles of the rotator cuff. We have the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, 
the subscapularis, and then the teres minor. Then the teres major is not considered really the rotator cuff, but that goes, um, or wait, I'm sorry, the teres major, yeah. So basically, they, you, can, you can count that in with it for the most part, um, but those are the main ones. So, but anyways, yeah, that's in general the rotator cuff. And it's basically what the rotator cuff does is it stabilizes the joint. So when you're going to do, say, you're pushing up, those muscles engage to keep your joints in great alignment. They also move the joint, all right? And so they all do different movements, though. All right, I'm going to go through all the movements with you. All right, let me share, let me get rid of the screen here so I can show, okay. So what I'm going to do is show you some exercises you can do. So just really two main ones. The first one is called the pendulum. All right, so grab yourself, actually, you know what? I don't want to demonstrate with a bad chair. So grab yourself a chair that doesn't have wheels. All right, or you can hold on to like a countertop or a couch. And so just hold on to something. And so this is my left hand, that's my left leg is forward. So now that gives my right arm, say my right arm's the one that's kind of not feeling too good. So you'd let your right arm dangle and then you'd use your body to kind of swing it around in a circle. Right, but you don't want to just use your arm because that's not really going to do, that's just going to work, overwork the muscles. So instead, use your body to kind of swing it around. All right, now it even works better if you have a weight. So you can use like a, like a dumbbell or I'll use one of my Tai Chi balls. This is two pounds. So I have like a little two pound ball here. But you can use a soup can or a light dumbbell or something. And then that really helps to distract the joint, meaning to open it. So that'll open the joint and keep it from getting stiff. All right, and then you go both ways. So then you go the other way. All right, but mostly using your body. Your arm can move a little, but you want to primarily use your body to drive the movement so that you're not just doing this because that's just probably going to overwork it. So the key is to relax the arm. Let it just soften and let the joint open. So this is kind of pulling open the joint so it's not so stiff. All right, and then you can do both sides too. You would just switch sides. And so if my right leg's forward, then my left arm is the one I'm working. All right, so same thing. And then you can go back and forth too. Just go back and forth, see how that feels. So that's the traditional pendulum. But I like the circles because that helps to lubricate the joint too. So remember, circular movements like Tai Chi help to lubricate the joints. So we have synovial fluid, and so that's the, what lubricates the joints basically. So. All right, so now that we've loosened up the joint, and that's going to actually help with pain. So if you feel really, I've had probably like 50 to 80% of people just doing the pendulums relieves pain. So that's a good thing to do to try. And you want to do 10, so you'd want to do like 10 circles one way, 10 the other, and then maybe 10 back and forth. And just do it once a day to start and just see how it feels. If it's okay or it feels great, then you can do it twice a day. And then after a few days, work up to three. You probably don't need to do it more than three times a day for most people. Um, so just stick to that and uh, see how it feels. All right. If it hurts more, then just stop. Once again, the best thing to do if you do have an injury is first get assessed by a physical therapist because then they can customize a plan for you. Otherwise, this is more general. This is for educational purposes only. It's my disclaimer. All right. So the other thing we want to do is get the muscles working better. All right. Because as I mentioned, the primary reason why your shoulder's probably injured is because there's a muscle imbalance. That's, that's the number one reason why most people have it. Now, you could have a fall that could have caused it or some sort of trauma or others. There's a, there's a lot of reasons, but most people, they just need to strengthen the muscles to get things better. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to work all the muscles of the rotator cuff. All right, and so the first thing we want to do is work the subscapularis. Remember, that's the one in the front. All right, so pretend this is like the side of a, a wall. Like say you're like in a doorway. All right, so this is the doorway. I'm, I'm stepping through the doorway and I'm placing my hand on one side of the door jamb. All right, and so actually you kind of want your, you want it to be kind of 90 degrees if you can help it. And then you're gonna push into the door with your hand. All right, so I'll show you from this side. So it's like we're pushing it into that way. Oops, but <laughs> the door won't move. <laughs> so, but I'm just showing you, but pushing in there and hold for 10 seconds. And as you do it, you want to push a little bit, and then as you get up to five, then push harder, and then after five, start to let go. All right, so it should be a gradual contraction and a gradual release. All right, so you want to do that. Hold for 10 seconds, and then release. And then you do the other side. So then you put the back of your hand against the wall or the door jam or wherever and push that way. 
All right, but you shouldn't actually be moving because the, you know, unless you have a really weak wall. <laughs> so it should just push. It's called isometric, where we're contracting the muscle without the actual movement of the joint. All right, and then the next ones are easier. This one, you can just place your hand, palm up, and then you just push into your palm. All right, so now this is working some of the shoulder muscles in the back and your tricep. And this are all the muscles that attach to your shoulder. And then we go up. All right, so this is working the bicep and all the other muscles that attach to the shoulder as well. So same thing, hold for 10 seconds for each direction. So you have four directions. So we have pushing in, pushing out, pushing up, and pushing down. All right, do each of those, and what that does is that's gonna increase blood flow to that area for healing. So that's gonna help with healing, but it's also gonna get those muscles more active. Because as I mentioned, most people have imbalances where some of those muscles aren't working very much, and the other ones are working too much. So we gotta get all of them activated the right way by isometrics, and then that'll get things to where they start to heal, and well, they might be good for some people. You might actually start to feel a lot better, but. Ultimately, you probably need to get an assessment if it continues on with pain or, or if you have limited function, it's always better to get an assessment. And that way you can get it customized and get maybe some hands-on work too if you need that. All right, now if you go to your physician and they don't recommend PT or they don't let you go to PT, then I would suggest finding a different physician. <laughs> uh, but you could just, most physicians will be happy to send you a script and hopefully your insurance could probably even cover it too or there's a lot of great PTs now that do it just out of pocket too. And I usually, th I think that that's worth it too. So um, but yeah, I'm doing that myself. So I only usually practice what I preach. So, um, but yeah, so let me know if that's helpful. If you have any questions, then type them in the chat. All right, I'll see if I can get to them or in the comments and I'll take a look now. And then if I miss any though, I'll just look over them the next couple days and reply to them as soon as I can. All right, let's see. Oh, great, Shan loves this about the healing. Yeah. How close to the door jam. So you just want to stand so that your arm is, so if this is the door jam here, you just want to come up to the door jam. And so you basically want to be it, it, wherever you can be to where your elbow is by your side. So your elbow is by your side, 90 degrees, and you're pushing into the door or the wall. All right, and then same thing for the back. The back one's easy. You can just go to a wall and just push into the wall. And so say this is the wall here. Um, and so I would just come up to the wall and push into it. So you want to be really close to the wall, actually. And then this one, you just you can do anywhere. But try to keep your arm neutral. So you don't want it in too much. You don't want it out too much. You want to kind of right in the center. And then push up, hold for 10 seconds. And then push down, hold for 10 seconds. And just do that once a day. And then you can do it more if it feels OK. All right, let me see. Thank you. I injured my shoulder. It's helping a lot. Oh, great. Great. Thanks, Stella. All right, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions on that, and I'll see if I can answer them in the chat there over the next couple of days. But oh, I do have a poem that I wanted to share with you today. All right, so this one is one of my favorites. It's called Birthright. Despite illness of body or mind, in spite of blinding despair or habitual belief, who you are is whole. Let nothing keep you separate from the truth. The soul, illumined from within, longs to be known for what it is. Undying, untouched by fire or the storms of life, there is a place inside where stillness and abiding peace reside. You can ride the breath to go there. Despite doubt or hopeless turns of mind, you are not broken. Spirit surrounds, embraces, fills you from the inside out. Release everything that isn't your true nature. What's left? The fullness, light and shadow. Claim all that as your birthright. So that one's from Dana Falls, one of my favorites. So I love that line about riding the breath to go there, to that stillness. So no matter what you have going on, there is this peace that you can connect with. It might be hard to find. It might be covered up by a lot of stuff, a lot of conditioning, a lot of stuff, a lot of beliefs that we have. But it's, I do believe that we have this place that we can connect to, and that's where we get the deepest healing. That's where we can be at ease no matter what's going on. All right, well, thank you all so much.
I really appreciate your time, your presence, and your energy. For those coming to the workshop in person tomorrow here in Asheville, I can't wait to meet you in person. And for those that uh, can't make it this time, there'll be another one probably next year. So uh, I'll let you know. But for now, I really just hope that you all are filled with peace, happiness, and harmony. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon.